Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a one-way ANOVA using Microsoft Excel. In the data analysis pack in Excel, a one-way ANOVA is referred to as an ANOVA single factor. And we can access the data analysis functions at the top ribbon by moving to data. And you can see all the way to the right, the top right, data analysis tools. Now, if this is not visible, on your ribbon, you won't be able to access these tools until you activate it, although it is fairly easy to do so. If you go to File, and then go to Options, then Add-ins, and then down to Manage, and by default it'll read Excel Add-ins here. Click Go, and just select Analysis Tool Pack. Click OK. So for a one-way ANOVA, I've set up these fictitious data in this Excel workbook. And you can see that I have three variables, substance use, depression, and trauma. They're set up in columns. But actually, this represents one independent variable with three levels. If we're using software like SPSS, we would see all these values in one column, and then we'd see substance use, depression, and trauma all in one column. So we can think of these three levels, again, as one independent variable, and let's say that it is the focus of treatment. So that's the independent variable. So you have substance use, depression, and trauma. So all the participants in this study would have symptoms of substance use, depression, and trauma. The question would be, what group were they randomly assigned to? A treatment group that focuses on the substance use, that focuses on the depression, or that focuses on the trauma. So all of these data values, all these scores, would come from the same instrument. Let's say in this case it's an instrument that measures general mental health symptoms, where a lower score represents fewer symptoms and a higher score represents more symptoms. So the group that has the best results on this instrument would be the group that has the lowest mean score. So we'll use a one-way ANOVA to see if there are any differences, statistically significant differences, between the three levels of the independent variable treatment focus. So there are assumptions to a one-way ANOVA, and Excel cannot comprehensively test all the assumptions of ANOVA, but there are a few things we can do to try to see how close we are to meeting the assumptions, to get an idea of how close we may be. So one of the assumptions of a 2A ANOVA is that we have homogeneity variance. Now I have a separate video that covers this. There is a way to run a Levine's test, and that would be a good test to run to determine homogeneity variance. It's also known as homoscedasticity. But here in Excel 2016, without going into the long description of how to conduct a Levine's test, I'm going to use a box plot. And this will also help me test for another assumption, which is no outliers. So I'm going to select A1 all the way down through C31, so all the labels and all the scores and go to Insert, and again in Excel 2016, there's an option here, Insert Statistic Chart. And I'm gonna select Box and Whisker, otherwise known as a box plot. And you can see here that we have no outliers. Now if you look at the intraquartile range, it does appear like we have homogeneity of variance. Again, though, it's difficult to tell without running a formal test. There are no outliers here, but I want to show you what it would look like if we did have an outlier. So I'm going to take the first value in the trauma level independent variable and change it to a value that I know would be an outlier, let's say 30. And you can see that it appears here as a point 
and it's outside of the bottom whisker. If I were to change the 30 to 70, you can see now I have an outlier up here above the top whisker. So I'm going to change this value back to the original, which was 53. So again, no outliers. And it does appear we meet the assumption of homogeneity of variance based on visual inspection of this box plot. Another assumption working with one-way ANOVA is that the residuals for each level of the independent variable are normally distributed. Again, there's no direct way to test for that in Excel, but I'm going to use a histogram to try to get an idea of how close we may be as far as the normal distribution. So I'm going to delete the box plot and I'm going to select just substance use here. So just A1 through A31 and, and then insert statistic chart and this time I'm going to select histogram. So we only have the four columns here but this does appear to be normally distributed this variable this level of the independent variable based on these four columns and you can see here there's a blue line around the scores and I can move the selection over to the next level of the independent variable and again this appears normally distributed for depression and again I can move it over to trauma and this appears normally distributed so I'll delete this and we'll move to the data ribbon and take a look at the data analysis tools. So you can see at the top here we have ANOVA single factor, two factor with replication and without replication. I'm going to be using an ANOVA single factor for a one way ANOVA. So select that and click OK and the next thing it's going to look for here is the input range and that's going to be A1 through C31 all the labels and all the values the data are grouped by columns and that's what it's set to by default I'm going to leave that as the default setting the labels are in the first row an alpha of 0.05 or 5% is fairly common in the social sciences so I'm going to leave that set at 5% and then for output range I'm going to select cell F3. Now we're ready to conduct the one-way ANOVA. I click OK. So you can see from the output that it's divided up into summary and ANOVA and the statistic that was run is listed up here ANOVA single factor and you can see we first have groups and these are the three levels of the independent variable substance use depression and trauma the sample size was 30 for each group for each level then you have the sum and then the average now I'm going to move over to home and for average I'm going to make this so that just two digits to the right of the decimal are displayed it makes it a little easier to read so you can see that the substance use group had the lowest mean, depression had the highest, and trauma was somewhere in the middle. And then you have the variance for each of the levels of the independent variable. So now moving down to the ANOVA portion of the results, you can see that we have between groups and within groups. And of course here we're going to be interpreting the between groups results. We have the sum of squares for both between and within groups and the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom are two. We have two degrees of freedom here. That's because we have three groups. So the degrees of freedom would be the number of groups minus one. For within groups, it's the number of observations minus the number of groups, so 90 minus three. That's where we get the 87 degrees of freedom for within groups. You can see we have the F value returned, 5.96, and it also gives us the F critical value, 3.1. So right away we see that the F value is greater than the F critical, so now we know that we have a statistically significant finding. And of course we can look at the P value and see that it's 
0.0037, which means there's only a 0.37% chance that our observation could have been observed through random error alone. That is below the alpha of 0 0.05, so we would reject the null hypothesis that states that there are no differences between the group scores. Because we have three levels of the independent variable, we would need to run a post hoc test to see where the difference is. There may be a statistically significant difference between all the groups or between two of the groups and the other group. We don't know without post hoc testing. So we know a statistically significant difference is somewhere within these three groups, but we don't know the configuration. Now there is no post hoc test available in the data analysis tools. We could run ANOVAs between all the pairs, so substance use depression, depression trauma, and trauma and substance use. But we would have to control for typo and error and one way we could do that is through a Bonferroni adjustment, and that's where we take the alpha and divide it by the number of levels of the independent variable. So it'd be 0 0.05 divided by three, and that would be the new alpha. So it's important to understand here that this p-value, although it does tell us there's a statistically significant difference between the groups, it does not identify where that difference is and more testing would be necessary. I hope you found this video on conducting a one-way ANOVA in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.